Um, hello, my name is Ruven. I'm here with Christian, and um, we both work at Consensus, and we want to give you an update on viewport. Usually, I start this talks telling about identity in general and how important it is, but I think for, for this crowd, I uh, skip that part. Um, obviously, identity in all the kind of forms, like for people, for tools, for everything, it's super important. Today, I want to focus on the challenges I think the community here <coughs> is dealing with mostly. Obviously, key management, we've spoken about user experience for the average show, um, mobile, and I think we had already in the last three days quite some interesting uh, projects with MetaMask, with uh, Mist and others, light clients. I think there's a lot of things happening, and I think we have something which is uh, a little bit different and very complementary to the things which already um, people are working on. So it's pretty exciting. Um, identity and data ownership is a, obviously a huge topic. Um, we will touch on this to a certain extent, but we'll not completely cover this because 10 minutes is a bit short for some of this stuff. So I want to go um, first to explain a little bit about the design principles <coughs> from viewport. For us, um, the core thing is we, we believe self-sovereign identity is, is the solution we need to, we need to uh, achieve. It's really important that it's use, like easy to use. <coughs> so we, have, we spend a lot of time on thinking about uh, usability. And ultimately, if you want to do anything in the, in the digital world, um, reputation and trust is really important. So we spend a lot of time thinking about um, attestations and how we, how we build a platform which can establish this trust. <coughs> so the, the three main elements is um, how do we recover keys? What's an easy way to do this without relying on a company or someone else to do this? And we have some interesting ideas on this. We need a persistent identifier. So I think that's something, at the moment, people use um, public keys. That's kind of your identifier, and that's what people use. But what happens if you uh, lose your key or you it gets, it gets compromised? And then you start from scratch. So I think <coughs> we have now given uh, to Piper our, our keys, and let's see what happens if, if things um, get lost. So I think it's really important that we find a way, and uh, I think we found at least a good idea how we can uh, tackle this problem. And um, attestations and um, attributes <coughs> is a key element to this. So once you have an identifier, you can now um, claim certain attributes and go and get attestations from institutions, from um, I don't know, whether it's a bank, whether it's an employer, your landlord, whatever it is. And over time, you build um, connected to your identity more and more um, elements, which you can then share selectively um, to the relevant parties, and you build up a um, like really strong reputation and therefore the trust you need to interact with digital services. And Christian will now tell you how we solved it. Exactly. So the way we deal with um, key management first is that you know, in order to interact with Ethereum, you need to have a, a system for managing keys. So normally what this has been is you have a key maybe encrypted in a file, and then you need to make sure you don't lose that file. Or maybe you have a 12-word uh, uh, seed or mnemonic, then you need to write it down, but you need to write it down securely, etc. So we're taking a slightly different view. So uh, mobile devices today, especially those with uh, <coughs> secure enclaves can provide a very safe environment for, for a private key. So what we're doing is we have a private key, it's in the secure enclave, and it's never supposed to leave the device. So in order for this, you have a problem. What happens if you lose your device? The idea there is to have a key recovery system where you can tell your friends or other delegates that they can go in and actually have authority to restore your identity if, if you need to. And so in order to do this, we use a, uh, what we call a proxy contract as your core identity construct. So the address of the con proxy contract is your identifier. Uh, whenever you want to interact with a, an application contract, what you do is you send a transaction uh, from your phone you sign it with your key, but you send it through a controller contract, through the proxy contract, and to the application. The application uses the uh, message.sender construct in Solidity, and it sees the proxy contract address as the, uh, as the sender. So what this means is that we can extract the, uh, the access control logic in a controller contract that is accessed by the device key, but it also has a multi-sig recovery feature. 
So this allows you to, if you lose your phone, you get a new phone, you can regenerate a key, but your recovery friends can, can recover you. So uh, that's the background, and now we're going to show a, a demo. If it works. <coughs> so this is integration with the Gnosis platform that Martin just talked about. Oh, here we go. So basically what you see here on the, on the phone, <coughs> it's a very simple um, iPhone app. Um, you download it and it it's very, like it generates automatically the private key. It automatically generates the, the, the um, smart contract Christian just mentioned. <coughs> and what we're going to show you now is an interaction, like what's the usability for, for you, if you if you use this. So let me see whether it works. So what you see is, this is just the, the profile app. <coughs> you, you scan the QR code on the app. So there's nothing installed on this on this um, browser. <coughs> you just go to the app, to the Gnosis page in this case. You see the identifier. It's the same you, you have here. You should see your balance. It's a little bit small maybe, um, which is the same address. And you see your, your past transactions. So the login process is very simple. We just hand over <coughs> the identifier. Well, now what we're going to show you is signing a transaction. So <coughs> we go and purchase some shares. Um, doing so, we just enter the amount um, and whatever we want to do. And after we confirm this, it will generate a QR code again. That's not, let's at the moment, that's the MVP state. We have some other ideas how we can make this more user friendly. But what we do now, we scan um, the Ethereum um, call, and you will see now automatically, it will recognize it's a, it's a buy shares um, activity. And now to use it and sign it needs the private key. So it asks for the, for the biometrics. And what it does now, it sends it to Infura to, to relay the message, and we send back this um, transaction hash to the application so it can immediately react. So it's not like waiting for 15 seconds. You see the hash here as the, hey, something has happened, but it's still processing it. So because it needs to mine um, for the next block, and once the, once the block is mined, the shares have been bought. So that's kind of what we think is a like, much nicer interaction with, uh, with a smart contract. We use already um, the four byte um, directory and uh, ERC67, so this is our already happening. <coughs> so let me see whether I can go back. So thanks to Piper Merriam. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so we have not enough time today, so we just briefly, this is how it looks if you do it on a mobile. So it works already today, so you can um, open a, like our test app, in the moment when you say uh, connect, it opens up um, instead of the QR code, it just says, it jumps to the app, you say authorize, and it jumps back to the application and you are identified with, with your address. It's pretty simple, same works with uh, signing a contract. So it's kind of uh, neat. <coughs> Our social recovery, which Christian mentioned, so the controller and what we have built for now is just to start. Um, the idea is here, you have a contact list of your friends and you just pick, in this case, three individuals, you say, this is my recovery key, it will set up basically like a multi-sig, but the user doesn't even know that he, that is involved. We keep it really, really simple. The flow, how it looks like, and I need to jump now a little bit faster, you click, instead of creating a new um, viewport identity, you say recover, you will generate a new key, it will show this, this is now your new one, it will uh, use this connecting to other, uh, to your friends, they need to scan this and say, oh, this is this person, they send a transaction to the controller to enable and unlock you and reconnect you back to the identity you have before. That's the persistent identifier, which we think is really, really important. <coughs> I think we need to skip. Yeah, okay. So just briefly, um, <laughs> we're running out of time. So um, we have a lot of more ideas, like how we can use different keys of different levels to integrate hardware wallets, to make this much more. I think we have a robust uh, foundation, but there's a lot of things we want to talk about. Come find us later, we can talk about some of the vision um, elements. Uh, Christian needs to tell you now how you can use it. Yeah, so this is the, uh, as a developer, how do you integrate with Uport? So we have open source libraries. They, uh, you write your app using a standard Web3 uh, paradigm, as uh, Fabian talked about. We have a uh, Uport Web3 provider that you can just drop in. The, uh, when you do the get accounts, it will trigger the uh, Uport Connect feature, the scanning a QR code. The send transaction or doing a uh, contract call will uh, 
will trigger the transaction signing flow. It will, uh, by default, it will take care of generating all the QR codes and stuff like that, but you can also uh, customize it if you want more uh, specific integration. So, um, thanks. You can find our libraries, open source libraries, on uh, GitHub. Uh, we have a white, pa white paper on, uh, on our website, uport.me. And uh, if you want to uh, have a taste of the, uh, of the app, you can go to uport.me slash devbeta for the iOS app. Our Android app is coming soon. You can email us at android at uport.me to hear more news about that. Great. Thank you very Thank much, you. Christian Thank and Reuven.